Welcome everyone. This is going to be our Algebra 2 Linear Functions Lesson Number 5, Inverse of Linear Functions Home Review, Part 1. And so in this case, uh, we're going to go over questions, starting number 1, and, uh, you know, go over decimal ideas that have to do with inverse functions, inverse of linear functions. Our question 1 begins with the graph of a function and its inverse are always symmetric across which of the following lines? Well, when we find the inverse of a function, it's sort of like a transformation we might have learned from previous classes. And so the we were reflecting our image in this case across the line. Well, let's take a look. When taking the inverse of a function, it is the same as reflecting the function in the line y equals x. We learned before that when we find the inverse function, we are normally switching x and y values. This is the same as performing the transformation reflecting in the line y equals x. So xy becomes yx. And we learn in geometry that that would be a line reflection, a line reflection over the line y equals x. So for number one, our answer is going to be choice three, reflection over the line y equals x. Therefore, the, the image of the function is the image of the inverse of the function is symmetric across the line y equals x. which the following represents the inverse of the linear function y equals 3x minus 24. And so to find the inverse of a linear function, we might have talked about before, there are the following steps. First thing, the inverse of function is a relation where every input x is switched for its corresponding output y. So to find the inverse of a function, we 1, switch the x's and y's, and then 2, solve for y. So for every time we find the, in, the inverse of a function, we're going to switch to all the x and y values. And by the way, if they give the function f of x, we're going to rename f of x as y and then switch x and y and solve for the new y. So here, since we have y equals 3x minus 24, our first step is to switch the x and y values. So x equals 3y minus 24. Well, now, because we're looking for the y value, not for the x value, we're going to find y in terms of x. So we're going to first add the 24 to both sides. And so now we have x plus 24 equals 3y. Our next step would be to divide everything by 3, so we get 1y. Now, it helps in this case, especially when you're looking at the uh, the choices, that instead of drawing a single bar over the, the, the expression x plus 24, that we divide each of the terms by 3, because that's what we're going to get. And so now, 3 divided by 3 is 1, so we have 1y is equal to 1 third x. And if we take 25 divided by 3, we're going to get 8. So the inverse of y equals 3x minus 24 is not just flipping some numbers or switching things around. It is going to be when you try to find the inverse function, you want to switch the x and y values, but then solve for y. And so for y equals 1 third x plus 8, we're going to have choice 1. For number 3, if the y-intercept of a linear function is 8, then we know then we know which of the following is about its inverse. So the y-intercept is going to be a point on the graph. Well, and this point of the graph is going to have an x value of 0 and a y value of 8. And since we're trying, what do we know about the inverse? We know the inverse has a point that's going to be not 0 comma 8, but switch. So again, we're going to reflect in the line y equals x, which means we switch x and y. And so the inverse will have a point that's 8 comma 0. Now, 8 comma 0, this would mean that not the y-intercept, because here, the y-intercept is going to be the value of y with x equals 0. Instead, we have 
what is called the x-intercept, the value of x when y equals zero. So we have an x-intercept equal to eight for the inverse. And again, how do we find this? We took our coordinate of zero comma eight and just switched the values for x and y. So our answer will be choice two. It, the inverse will have an x-intercept of 8. Okay. Number 4. If both were plotted, which of the following linear functions would be parallel to its inverse? Okay. Well, here's the thing. We know that our line y equals x is going to be the line of reflection in this case. So for your line to be, for the inverse to be parallel to the original, it would have to have the same slope. And for it to have the same slope, it would then also have to be parallel to the line y equals x. So, both the function, both, oh, sorry, try combine the word the with both. So, both the function and its inverse, and its inverse are parallel if they are parallel to the line y equals x. Okay? Now, what does it mean for two lines to be parallel? They must have the same slope. And the slope for y equals x is a slope of 1. So which of these four choices have a slope of 1? Well, wouldn't be this one, that's slope of 2. Wouldn't be this one, slope of 2 thirds. Wouldn't be this one, slope of 5. It would be this one, y equals 1x plus 6, which means a slope of 1. So the answer for number 4 is choice 4. Okay? Which of the following represents the equation of the inverse of y equals 4 thirds x plus 24? All right, so in this situation, we are going to now find the inverse. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch the x and y values. And so now we get x is equal to 4 thirds y plus 24. We then try to solve for y, so I'm going to circle that letter we're trying to get by itself in terms of x. So we begin by subtracting 24 on both sides. And so now we get x minus 24 is equal to 4 thirds y. Well, we're going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 4 thirds, which is 3 fourths. And making sure to distribute. So now, the 4 thirds divides by 3 fourths, and now we have 1y is equal to, now, 3 fourths times x would be 3 over 4x minus 3 fourths times 24. Now, 3 fourths of 24, well, 4 definitely goes into 24 six times, leaving us with y is equal to 3 fourths x minus 18. And so this would be the inverse of this function y equals 4 thirds plus 24. That would be, in this case, choice 3. Okay, so remember, we're going to switch x and y. We're going to solve for y to find the inverse of a function. And now, question 6. 
Now, question six is interesting in this case because it is definitely going to be uh, this line is in the form what's called a point slope form. We learned that before. We have y minus y sub zero is equal to m times x minus x sub zero, where in this case m is equal to the slope and x sub zero, y sub zero is a point on the line. So when we see in this case y plus two is equal to four times x minus one. From here, our x sub zero matches with positive one. But the y sub zero, because it's negative y, equals, so if negative y sub zero equals positive two, that means y sub zero is equal to negative two. So we have a coordinate on this line that is one comma negative two. And if you remember, we had talked about what, how that the inverse will have this point, but, but in this case switched. So the inverse should have a point where we switch the order, neg two comma one. Now, which of these points is neg two comma one? Definitely choice four. And that's how we find this. But maybe we should try to find this the other way and then see which points work out. Okay, so I'm going to erase all this. And we're gonna start over again. And this kind of time, we're gonna switch the X and Y value. And so now we have X plus two equals four times Y minus one. Well, now we're gonna divide everything by four. So now we have X over four plus one half equals y minus one. Now that means in this case, I'm gonna add one to both sides. And so the inverse will be one fourth x plus three over two, because one half plus plus one is three over two, two. Now, will the coordinate negative two comma one work out? Well, let's see. So now we have one fourth times negative two plus three fourths. Does that equal to one? Well, one fourth times negative two is negative one half. Oh, should be, this should be in this case, I'm sorry, I wrote this three fourths. This should be three halves. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. So negative one half plus three over two, well, that's equal to positive two over two, and that equals a one. So that does work out for us that yes, choice four is still a point. So we tr solve this in two different ways. One way was to find the coordinate using the point slope form of the original function and just flip the X and Y values because that's how we find the inverse of a point. And then, or we could just find the inverse of the function and then see if the coordinate works out. Now we could test all the other ones, but we definitely know that next two comma one works out fine. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for watching and hope that, you'll, that if, you've, if you found this video helpful, please give it a like. And if you have not done so, subscribe to the channel, make sure to turn on notifications um, to get no notified when new videos are added. Also, please leave any comments or questions in the comment section below. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you again on the next video. Take care and be safe.